Running with the Buffaloes is a book about running, and I run, and if you run, you have probably heard of this book, but there's no reviews on it, so I'm going to review it. Book review with Talon! Okay. I don't know how to intro this, but I'll just, let's start with explaining what the story is. Okay, so the story starts off with this little guy right here. Uh, his name is Adam Groucher. He actually looks like this. He's a real person, not a stick figure. And, you know, he's a world-renowned runner, in case you didn't know. Well, he's... We'll, we'll explain it later. This is him and his wife. So, yeah, he's cool. Adam is the main character in the book because he's the fastest on the Colorado team. This is a picture of Colorado, anyway. But there's a bunch more guys. Like, I mean, a bunch more guys. Like... All these guys. The point is, is there are a lot of characters in this book. Yes, I'm in a completely different outfit. I mean, it's literally a cross-country team, so of course there's going to be a bunch of guys. I mean, look at this. The first few pages are just like introducing these characters. See each every single one of these? This is Jason Robbie. Jason Robbie's alright, but he is nice. We're going to just keep it to the main characters or the main-ish characters which are this is Adam as well but we're gonna call him Bats because his last name is Bats and you know there's too many Adams this is him when he's really old by the way boom another one uh this is Mike he's pretty cool he's like cool. Ron Roybal yeah he's all the way to the left I know there's two guys in Colorado jerseys but he's all the way to the left at least I think it is He's right there. I don't really know. It's the only picture that showed up when I searched. My dog's crying in the background. The guy besides Ron is actually Chris. Uh, Chris is uh, has a sad story in this book, actually. The way the book goes into, like, injuries and it explains what, like, a mental battle it is to be injured and you can't run. And there's a, a bat. His name's Bat. I don't know how. Let me play. Okay, he's a senior, and he was he was supposed to be, like, their number two guy and be insane, right? But he got injured, and he kept getting injured, and he couldn't run. And in the end of the day, he still, they, like, raced him into shape, and he, he still succeeded, succeeded because he, like, won it that bad. And the book explains it perfectly, like, what it feels like. I, well... I don't know. I kind of get it. I don't really get it. But, you know, I haven't been like, I'm not a NCAA, AA, D1 insane athlete. Not yet. Alright. Anyway, right? But I understand. I felt, I know. I just felt very connected to the book. And expect, especially Adam. I thought Adam was, Adam Batliner was one of my favorite characters. For sure. Uh, another incredibly... Uh, unique thing about this book that really engaged me was how every chapter in the book is simply the next day. You really get emotionally invested when you <laughs> read about someone's day-to-day -day life. Um, I think this book is an excellent book if you just want to know the struggles that a, a runner goes through, a pro runner. It's fantastic. One of my favorite chapters is definitely Mags um, because I've actually ran on Mags. Now I've actually my dog just came inside. Now I've actually ran in Mags, so it was really cool, you know. Okay, stop. Get off. Get off, buddy. Get out of here. Get out of here. Come on. Come on out. Take these almonds. Come on. No! Don't jump on the bed. Don't jump on the bed. You're dirty. I think Magnolia. Let me see. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna be honest. But the point is, I ran there, and that is tough. That the fact that they're racing that every single time they go there, and it's like 20 miles, you know, they're monsters. And in the book, they always get injured, and it kind of makes sense because they're going crazy. But there's a quote in the book that says, let me find it real quick. I feel like this is a book discussion in school right now. 
but I'm not talking to anyone, I'm just talking to a camera. Anyway, they talk about how this causes casualties, but that also is what makes them good. If that makes sense. Because they go so hard, it's what makes them good. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. Something. And now I'm rapping with a crew or something. I guess the track don't really stick unless he's blowing something. And I never fit the shoe until I do or something. Pretty good. I'm not even gonna count. I had to take a shit. I, went, I had to take a poop the first like two miles. But it like went away, so I'm okay. How far are you going? I'm going 10. Almost there to the turnaround point. All this rap these days, and we can still pitch the track to all the wack DJs. We're singing happy. Okay. Spoiler alert. If you like the book so far, but you're still listening, because you're like, oh, you know, I guess I'll never read it. But if you're like, even a, even a smidget close to reading it, read the book. Okay, if you don't care about the book, this is what happens. Crazy twist. Christopher Sev dies. He dies in the middle of the book, or not, yeah, kind of towards the middle of the book, and... He's a real he's a real person, so I don't want to talk to, like it's a fictional character, but it's so sad. The way he dies, he dies because he was training and he wanted to start biking from to the like the school so he can get extra fitness and so they can be NCAA AA champions, right? But he hits a tree and it's really sad. But like right after that. Every single one of the guys, they come together and they just start, they don't start training like crazy, but it's like, it tells a story of turning grief into something good. Coming into the NCAA championships, the team was seated fourth and of course the team did not agree with this and, you know, they've gone through too much and this was the race where they could honor their lost friend, you know, this isn't a... Uh, book about running it's a book about turning grief into something good and that's what I really like about the book I didn't do the greatest job of explaining how good this book is but if you're a runner and on a cross-country team get this book and read it it's it's amazing and if you just want to hear a story about how people turned a bad thing a sad thing into something amazing this is also a great book um, that's going to be it for me today. Here's the rest of the NCAA race D1 championships. Adam Groucher is in fourth, first place right now. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. And now they're going by the two mile mark, 9.15 at two miles. So 4.33 for the first mile, 4.42 for the second mile as we watch the remaining. Goucher Lagat. Goucher taking the inside on that turn to the right, and he and Abdi Rahman working their way down the hill. I love this portion of the course, John. They go over these hills. They're making these sharp turns. It just really looks like they're racing. And now Abdi Rahman and Goucher just battling it out head-to-head -head as we head the back side of the course, which is this sort of low grass area, lots of little turns, and across these dams that separate the ponds. Lagat following the group of Abdi Rahman and Goucher and uh, Kaylee. Here's Hauser, and that's Matt Downen from Wisconsin having a great race so far. And this, John, look at the body language right here. Goucher's got his head up. He's charging down the center of the course. Abdi Rahman was just hugging that line, head down. Doesn't look like he's competitive anymore. And sure enough, Adam Goucher pulling away from Abdi Rahman in this final mile. He's really dropping it down. Goucher fulfilling the promise that he showed as a freshman when he finished second in this event. He's been denied the championship for three years. He said coming in, I wanted this championship from two and a half minutes after finishing that freshman race. And now he's finally getting close. Sean Cayley of Arkansas behind Mwangi and Downen of Wisconsin. Brad Hauser in sixth at this point in front of Bernard Lagat of Washington State and Utah's Jeff Simonich. With less than a quarter, this is about a half mile, quarter mile to go, John. Really people struggling here. We got an extra point here and there, but that won't be a problem for Adam Goucher. Adam Goucher having cracked Abdi Abdi Rahman over the last mile will come home to the big ovation, the one he's wanted ever since he was a freshman. Adam Goucher, 1998 NCAA champion. University of Colorado, Goucher never finished worse than sixth in his four years.
a fifth-year senior who will graduate in December. Abdi Rahman, the senior from Arizona, comes in in second place. And the battle for third, Mwangi and Downen. And it's Mwangi who finishes just in front of Matthew Downen for yeah, third. To redeem himself from his second-place finish as a freshman. Four years, Adam, you finally did it. How did it feel? Um, it was hard, but it feels wonderful. It feels absolutely wonderful. Now, tell us about the middle of the race. Abdi Rahman looked like he was so easy. He was so relaxed. He was running right next to you. It seemed like you were feeling each other out. Mm -hmm. But by listening to his breathing, I felt like he was a little bit tired than me, I thought, possibly. So um, I think from that point where we broke away, maybe four miles to, to about what time we got to the top of Billy Mills Hill, I think it was just feeling, kind of feeling each other out, getting ready for the last surge of, um, to the end. And at the end of it, was it worth it? Oh, God, yes. It was awesome. It's definitely worth it. So the fourth and fifth runners make the big difference as Arkansas wins the championship over Stanford by 17 points.